Well, they take away small town park benches with religious quotes on them. They sue schools for Bible studies for elementary students. They want God and trust taken off the currency. Amazingly, though, atheists believe, in general, they are more tolerant than you are. That's according to new research. It shows that atheists think of themselves as open-minded and inclusive. The reality, according to the study, they are actually less tolerant than religious people. Amy Peacock is a feminist and an atheist who disagrees with the study's conclusion. She joins us now. Amy, thanks all for coming on. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. So are you allowed to disagree with a study? I mean, this is science. So don't you have to um, kind of certain, nod certainly, and certainly it? I'm allowed to disagree if I think that the fundamental approach is flawed. And I think there's one question that can show you what's wrong with the fundamental approach to this study, and it's okay. this. Are you closed-minded if you refuse to seriously entertain or to spread fake news? And by that I mean a media-driven narrative for which nobody has provided any evidence. I would say no, and yet the notion of closed-mindedness at the foundation of this study is essentially the same as that. Interesting. What, it, it, flesh that out a little bit. How, how do you think this study is flawed on its most basic level? So one of the things that the study classifies as closed-mindedness is a reluctance to come up with arguments against your particular position. So right. they ask you to take a position on three different questions. They're really kind of odd questions. It has to do with whether you think homes should be painted a light color, um, whether you think that it benefits society to have homosexuals um, you know, adopt children, and the third one was whether you think that the meaning of life is a, a personal question. So, a, you know, a bunch of random questions. But they ask you, take a position, and then they say, come up with a bunch of arguments against the position that you took. And then they say that they want you to tell, you, tell them whether they find that persuasive, whether you find that persuasive. So in order to be not closed-minded, according to this study, you have to come up with a bunch of arguments against your view, and you need to say that you find those arguments persuasive. It's not a situation in which you're presented for evidence against your view, and you've refused to consider that evidence, and then therefore you're closed-minded. No, it's that's, asking that's you to come up with study. the arguments. Well, thank you for explaining that. I, that's really interesting, and I actually think the study's more valid than I did before. Because okay, that really is, that is the acid test. Can you put, it's really a measure of empathy. Can you put yourself in the position of someone who disagrees with you and can you mount a valid or a reasonable argument against yourself and see its strengths and if you can't do that the question is why and that is because you can't imagine right. that right. decent people disagree with you. But in the, but in the study you. in the study Tucker they would deem you close-minded if you continued to find the arguments for your side more persuasive than the arguments for the other side. So I agree that it's very valuable in society and in fact I think one of the reasons that a lot of the, uh, the violence is breaking out on campus, for example, is the inability of people to understand arguments against their own view. Exactly. I agree and, with that. Right? So, so, you know, and there's been studies saying that they don't teach critical thinking and everything. So critical thinking, the ability to think about arguments against your view is good, but then to be asked to evaluate those as persuasive and to say that if you don't think those arguments against your view are persuasive makes you close-minded, I, I don't think that's valid. Well, I think then how, that about, that is how the about this? I mean, no, you're, you're, I disagree with you, but I think you're making a smart point. But how about just the reality that we see every day? I don't notice Christian groups suing to shut down atheist groups because they don't. But yeah, I do see a lot I'm, of atheist I'm, groups. I am, I am not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying... I'm not saying, you know, that there are not militant atheists, right? There are militant atheists. I don't happen to be one of them. And we could talk about, you know, why atheists become militant. I think more in the United States than in Europe, which was the focus of this study. Right. Um, here in the United States, the atheists, I think, are rebelling, you know, against, against their parents, so to speak. I, guess, I think they're more militant. But, you know, in this particular study, they're saying that you are closed-minded if, you having taken a certain position and finding that the most persuasive position then don't find persuasive the, right. the now, opposite but, but, view okay, but, and that doesn't seem fair um, there's one other aspect of the but, study that I think wait, but is not a, question, though, a, a broader sure. question which is sure. if you're a sincere Christian and most don't live up to this but this is the ideal you are commanded to love those who persecute you not just those you disagree with but people who are actually trying to hurt you 
There is no such requirement, of course, in atheism. So who's a more open-minded person? The person who's actively right. seeking to love someone who hates him or someone who's not. Sure. But then, but, then the, but then the question is, is that sort of open-mindedness actually a value as well? So, right, so I have actually two, two critiques of the study. One is, is that it defines closed-mindedness in such a way that atheists are going to automatically come out, I believe, as closed-minded. And it's because of the issue that we just, you know, talked about, this issue of having to come up with arguments against your view when you don't believe there's any evidence against your view, so there's that. And then the, the second issue is that it evaluates you according to your willingness to entertain contradictions, to integrate contradictions into your own thinking. And the refusal to integrate contradictions into your own thinking is part of the basic laws of logic. So, you know, on that standpoint, I would say yes, atheists are probably more likely to follow the basic laws of logic. The preamble of this study so that oh. atheists were more logical. I don't, so, I don't believe that. I will say, I have to admit, you seem like a pretty logical atheist. But I still didn't. I, I, I am, I am. I've been a lifelong are. atheist. Okay. I hope you switch, because it's depressing in the end. But thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.